My name is John Linton. I'm a photographer here at Celebration of Fine Art. Um, you wanted to learn more about the process? And yeah, of course. What we do. So uh, I'll just give you a, a, just a quick kind of overview. What you're looking at, if you want to pan around the, the studio here, you can see um, some of the work that's visible obviously that I'm showing, but there's essentially three different orientations or three different presentations of the photography and I'll give you a kind of rundown. So we can start over here. Uh, principally, I've been known over the years as a black and white photographer, but recently, subject to this piece, um, I'm starting to move some work in a, in a color direction. So this is a piece that recently won um, a pretty important designation here for a show in Phoenix, the greater Phoenix area. It's called Hidden in the Hills. It's an art show that's 25 years old. And this last November, um, I was juried into the show. And as an afterthought, I sent them a photograph that was in color um, that I'd taken down in Barrio Viejo in Tucson. I had recently come back from Havana, Cuba, and I had a show for some photographs that were in color there. Um, black and white doesn't read well in a place that's as colorful as Havana. So this is a neighborhood that I moved into just as a um, kind of a, a creative sojourn away from Scottsdale. I wanted to get away from Scottsdale for a week. I'm sorry, for a year, a few years ago. And a friend of mine lived down in Barrio Viejo and she said, move into my neighborhood. It's culturally diverse. It'll be exactly the, you know, the creative inspiration that you're looking for. And I began taking pictures of that barrio in, in Tucson. This was uh, my neighbor's house. Uh, she's a photographer. So as an afterthought, when I was juried in the Hidden in the Hills, I submitted this one color photograph and they picked this image um, as the first piece of photography that they've ever used as a cover art for the show in their 25 year history. So I started then creating some color pieces, even you know, brown and white. Um, I do a few different I'm wandering a bit, but I'll, since we're on the color theme, I'll show so you. Good, really. I'll show you some of. We appreciate you sharing. Oh, I appreciate you being here. So this is um, this is another example of some work in color, and I do. I'm really fussy about substrates. So when we're talking about process, I'm really um, very detail-minded about the framing choices, the matting choices, uh, the presentations, and we'll go over that. But. The paper choices here, I've got some work at home that's 100 years old. And I did recently some research to find out what this photographer had printed on in the 1920s, and it was rice paper. So I imported this rice paper from Europe, and I'm doing prints on rice paper. And if you kind of, I don't know how much detail the, your phone's going to provide, but you can see that there's a matte finish to the paper, and there's a little bit of a tooth to the paper, a little bit of texture. And it really then gives the work um, I think a warm, kind of inviting, artful feeling it or mood or temperament. It looks like a painting. Well, and that's what you hear a lot. This actually looks like a painting. And part of that is a lot of photographers today are pushing color. So I think they're, you know, anybody with, frankly, an iPhone today is, and a, and a, and a couple apps on the phone and some filters and editing tools, they're photographers. And they're pushing colors, they're perverting colors, so I'm actually going the other way. I'm, I'm drawing color back. And then what you're left with is something that looks a little bit more nostalgic, uh, almost like an old hand-painted postcard. So, substrates are important to me. Um, but, sorry, what, don't wanna take away, but are you uh, using film, digital, like what? No, listen, uh, a lot of my, I had a, um, and, and this is a good segue into this, and it, uh, I'll, I'll talk about I'll talk about this presentation, and that'll answer your question as far as um, whether it's film or digital. So I had a show in Los Angeles a number of years ago. I, I split my time between photography and then uh, a lot of humanitarian work. So I do a lot of humanitarian work around the social level of homelessness. So I have. I've had a show and it's a project called I Have a Name and um, I 
had a show in Los Angeles for some photographs that I took in Skid Row, some really gritty, hard to look at black and white photographs. And um, as an effort to get people to take a look at, at something that they don't normally want to take a look at. I had a friend die of a heroin overdose on the streets and I wanted to use art as a way to give honor, to, to provide honor to his memory and then at the same time give a voice to people that are living in the margins that are underserved. So I had a show in Los Angeles for that work some years ago and the LA photographer that gave me uh, a show in his gallery after we were uh, finished with the show and, and we were taking it down. It was late in the evening one night there in, in um, um, East LA where we were having the show in Echo Park. And he said, you know, you should really be using a digital camera. This is back in 2014 when I think Sony was just coming out with some digital equipment. And I was using film and I said, you know, I really, I'm not interested in, in and you know the learning curve that's going to be involved in in trying to make that transition from film to digital and then it was about one in the morning and he went outside and handheld his camera took a photograph with this piece of sony equipment that was a digital camera went back into his studio pulled the card out put it in his mac and opened it up and i said hey man can i stay here for a few days and learn how to use that camera so i've been using um, Sony equipment since 2014. I think I'm on the fourth generation of, of that Sony. They keep advancing it, don't they? Yeah, they've, they're coming out with a new one too. So I'll, I'll be using that. But this is um, this is also what you're looking at in here. What's your first name? John. John. As well. All right. John, Good name. Easy. So the the artist that I was uh, uh, the photographer that I was showing at in his gallery. We were taking down his work to put my work up. And I noticed that this was a presentation that he had created. So I asked him for the process and then adopted it for myself. Um, you can see that this work has no glass. So this is actually, it's a high grade of Fuji paper. It's very glossy when you print it initially. And then it's flooded with a matte satin spray. It goes under a dryer, it cures for a week. And after it cures, the paper is completely sealed and protected from any environmental contaminant and then you mount it on metal you dry mount it on metal and what that does is it eliminates the necessity for glass there's no reflection uh, it makes the work i think look a little bit more painterly in some ways so there are some occasions where people will ask it does you know, look like a painting. paintings so this is this is one of the presentations that i use uh, john this is traditional photography here in terms of paper matting glass and frames but what I would offer is that it's um, if, if you come in tight you can see again the paper choices that I'm using so this isn't real shiny paper this is paper that I import from Europe as well there's a little bit of texture to it it gives it a, a, I think a bit of warmth and again creates a, a more artful type of presentation and and then I'm real mindful I dry mount this I raise it off of I raise it off of the matting to give it some depth and even trim the matting around the frame itself so that it gives it a sophisticated, more refined I Definitely. Think, finish. Definitely. it go. So that's one of the other uh, one of the other presentations. And then I think lastly, after after this piece here was given, um, I guess was made cover worthy by Hidden in the Hills. I decided then. Um, Print on metal, so this is actually sublimation printing, and it's it's photography that's printed right on metal, and it gives it a very you know kind of contemporary look. I definitely, yeah. Like so, yeah, you're definitely uh, making the most of your craft. Yes, I try. Yeah, it's I showing try. definitely. Yeah. yeah.